Hey everybody, I'm Sean Rosenstiel, author of the School of Intentional Living and host of Authorized, where authors go live to reveal their insights, stories, and best lessons from their most recent works. Thanks so much for watching today and enjoy this week's episode. Al Gliani. Correct. Al Gliani. Yes. I'm trying to find another word that sounds like that, but I can't. No. I can't find it. I usually tell people they have when they have difficulty pronouncing my last name to think Italian and they get it. Okay, but. that makes sense. Agliani. Right. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Al Gliani, welcome to the show today. Thank I'm you, so Sean. excited to be here with you. Me too. And I just got done reading your brand new book, The Washing Machine, which was just published very recently. Yes. Awesome, awesome. So Let's, before we get into that, let's back up a little bit. Tell me how you got into becoming a children's author. I think that's so cool. Well, I think um, person-wise, I'm a very spiritual person. So uh, the spiritual side of the world has always interested me. And so when I decided to uh, write children's stories, basically the stories that I came up with had a lot of pictures related to them. Cool. And to me, it seemed like a children's book format as far as being able to express my spiritual ideas. That's very cool. That's very cool. So is there some spiritual undertones in, in this book? Oh, definitely. Um, so to recap the plot of The Washing Machine, um, it looks at people, I believe that people have an essence, sometimes called a soul. And so I believe... Um, our person, or our soul, is brought to this earth in a body, in our body. And cool. so various spiritual traditions will say that we're on a journey here, we're on a spiritual journey. And so um, you can see our journey here as a learning. We're here to learn things. Paradoxically, paradoxically we're also here... Um, one way of doing that is to unlearn things, is to sort of return to the original pure state. Innocent. Right, yeah. innocent state, yeah, that cool. where we came from. I love that. Right, so, um, so the washing machine is sort of an expression of that. Um, unlearning a, a washing. And so I put that idea into this children's story. The children's story is basically about a little girl that washes her favorite stuffed animals that have become dirty and then she's overjoyed at them becoming clean. And um, basically, you could think of the story, and I leave it open-ended. Like you said, um, some, some of the ideas, spiritual ideas might not be obvious if you read it, but um, basically, the washing machine is the earth, and uh, various pe the animals can be us, and um, the animals are washed in the washing machine, and in the end, um, they enjoy a good time with a little girl. And so the story, um, all the animals approach washing differently. Um, some of them mm. are scared of cool. being washed. Yep. Some of them really enjoy it. They enjoy tumbling around in the washing machine. Um, some of them would rather not be washed. And I think some of that reflects how various people um, approach their life. You know? Yeah, I don't like change, right? <laughs> I don't like change yeah. or I don't yeah. like suffering or yeah. I'd rather be the way I am. But uh, in the end of the story, everyone gets washed. Cool, cool. I love it. Everyone gets washed. <laughs> so if, if, the stuffed, if the stuffed animals represent us, uh -huh. who does the girl represent? God. Cool, cool. Right. I love that. Yeah, I mean, just reading through it, I can't wait to read it with my own children. And one of the reason I'm, reasons I'm so, um, this is so appealing to me, and I just love the fact that you took the time to, to, to write the book is... I find that with my kids, you know, we read all the time. Every night before bed, we have our little routine and we uh -huh. try to read for maybe 15, 20 minutes. Uh -huh. And now that my son Oliver is actually reading, um, it's great because he's reading to me now, which is really exciting. But I find that there's not many books out there and maybe I just haven't been exposed to them yet, but there's not many books that have these deeper lessons and deeper learnings. I mean, uh -huh. uh, Michael, you know, gave me a few books that, like The Energy Bus, for uh -huh. example, and uh -huh. um, there was a John Maxwell book. I think it was like, you either win or you learn. Uh -huh. And I love that, because that, that shares such good personal growth, just some of the tenets that would be really helpful for kids. And I love the, the spirituality uh -huh. angle at everything. 
Um, so I'm excited to read this with my kids and talk through that with them because as I read it, I didn't put that together that the earth was the washing machine, but it's very obvious once you know that because it looks like the earth. <laughs> so it's like, it oh yeah. And yeah. I, I think some children are at different levels, I think. And I'm not sure this, I mean, I'm not a child, so are adults. child psychologist. So are adults. Right, right, right. Exactly right. <laughs> so are we. And so if a, if a child sees that picture of the earth, I think cognitively they might not recognize that the earth, but there's a subconscious part of them yes. that might. Yes. And so well, I think that's perfectly fine for the, the work to work at them or with them at that level and sure not even knowing that it is sure no I love it but now that I'm armed with that wisdom I might have to make sure they put two and two together because their dad certainly did <laughs> that's awesome so yeah. this is your how, how many books have you published I sort of lost count maybe 10 oh wow 10 okay mm -hmm. so do your other books follow the same format as far as some spiritual lessons within a fun lighthearted story or what are some of your other books about? Um, I think so. At first, I thought I was a death writer because a lot of my books had to do with death. Hmm. Uh, but I think uh, I, I sort of evolved. And I've never heard about that genre. <laughs> What's your genre? Death. Oh. Well, okay, so the first book. <laughs> like I, a Stephen King type of thing? What does that even no, mean? No, like. Uh, Just pondering the larger questions right, of life. Larger and, yeah. Like, cool. what, what happens when you die? Yeah. And so I think that has to be one of the fundamental questions that everybody has to sure. um, engage. It's the you big know, one. What happens to me when yeah. I die? Yeah. And so my first book was called The Butterfly Field, or it, it is The Butterfly Field. And so it's basically a story of a grandfather and his grandson. Grandfather is sick, dying, terminally ill. And they go to this butterfly field, and um, hmm. the... the the grandfather shows his grandson a caterpillar and um, the caterpillar over time becomes a butterfly and so um, then the grandfather dies the the grandson feels sort of angry at the grandfather for leaving him but then he thinks back about this time that they spent in the butterfly field and he compares the grandfather's body to where he is now to like the caterpillar okay. and the butterfly the butterfly yeah. being the grandfather's soul okay Wow. And, so, and so in the end, the grandson sort of comes to the enlightenment or the understanding that maybe his grandfather hasn't left him. By looking back at these memories of, that he had with his grandfather, he can sort of bring him back to life. Cool. Yeah. Life. yeah. So, so again, that was about death. And That's so, cool. So I consider myself a spiritual person, mm -hmm. um, but I think you're further along on the path. So do your books come with... <laughs> a guide for people like me who need a little bit more instruction <laughs> to put some of that because that's uh -oh. deep stuff I love it yeah. it's, it's, it's very deep not really okay <laughs> do the kids pick up maybe the kids pick up because sometimes they know things that I think so that we've been kind of conditioned to right no it's, longer it's sort of that unlearning Sean right exactly but, um, yeah that's hard <laughs> right but the way it's supposed to be understood isn't necessarily right yeah um, I don't know if you've ever taken a class in hermeneutics. Mm -mm. So hermeneutics is sort of like how a, a work engages you. Okay. And so that will change according to your life. I forgot who says it that you, you re, when you return home, it's it, it it's different from when you first left. As far as where you are in life, right? What right, right. stage of the journey you're on, and like what what do you mean as far as like your life? Okay, say, say like the horizon. Okay. The horizon. Herman was specifically explaining the horizon. Even as you come closer to the horizon, the horizon always goes farther away. Mm, got it. Okay. So um, I don't think, for me, my works probably mean one thing. Um, I don't want to sort of freeze people into that same interpretation. It, right, but I, I'm fascinated because it, it's so neat to see what the author's interpretation right. is. Well, you I, know me personally, Sean, yeah, so yeah. pick up a phone and I'll tell you what it meant to me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, because you know, we read oftentimes autobiographically, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you're, yeah. you're sharing your creation, but we're interpreting that creation right, right, right. based on our own right, right, right. You know, experience, right. personal experiences. And that's right? great. That's yeah, great. It can be neat. different things for different people. Um, the butterfly field, I think, is sort of very literal. 
it's very expl- it explains itself in the story. Cool. This washing machine is not very literal. Cool. Um, if you didn't see, uh, associate the world with that picture of the washing machine, it might not register. Right. Yeah. Right. Like with me. <laughs> but now I have that insight, yeah. so I, I got I'm it. sure you were rushing through it, Sean. I'm sure you would have got it. If you look at the instra- illustrations, it'll. No, it's awesome. It's awesome. So you said roughly ten books. Do you have like um? What is your most popular book? Is it one of these two, or is it something else um, in the middle? So far, this has been the most popular. Like usually, they're sort of popular maybe a month or two after you publish them, and cool. sort of they die off. This has been um surprising that people still like it, and uh, it's really pop. It's really only popular in England. Hmm. Wow. And, and um, I always wondered. <laughs> Why that was interesting, um, but then they I, must value washing machines over there or clean stuffed animals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That, I don't know. That's but, great. Uh, I had an cool. English friend of mine come here, and I, upstairs I have all my books on on yeah. the shelf. Yeah, and then she goes, "Oh yeah, I think I know why, because uh, the colors are subdued here in, in this book, whereas in a lot of my other children's books it's very bright. Bright, bright yes, yep. and so I think." English generally are subdued, you know, they like to be conservative. Yeah. And so I, like when you open up, you said you like the illustrations. I think yes. the yeah. color, the color, um, and the way the artist did the illustrations, I think is what appeals. Cool. Uh, who did it? Who was the artist on it? Um, it was a writer, um, I'm sort of embarrassed, I don't recall her name, but um, Julie, Julie Allen. Julie Allen. Uh, she's an illustrator in... She, right now, she lives in Birmingham, Alabama. Cool. Right. Ha, have you worked with her in the past on your other books? or? No, nope, this was the first time I've used it, and I'll probably uh, use her cool. again. I usually use illustrators twice at least. Cool. So how long have you been pub 10 books, how long have you been? I think I started publishing in 2000, so 20 years. Okay, so one every two years, ballpark? That's about, that's about right. Okay. Um, since I have more money now, I'm doing probably two a year. Wow, that's neat. Mm-hmm. That's neat. Very mm-hmm. cool. Okay. Right. Um, so where do you get your inspiration from? Are these ideas that are percolating for a while? Like, how do you come up with a story um, as neat as that one? I've read a lot of spiritual books and ideas, so a lot of it comes like through that. Um, hmm. What are some of your favorite spiritual books? Uh, Thich Nhat Hanh is good. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and then I, I read... Fiction too, like um, I know why a cage. I know why the cage bird sings. Have you ever okay. read that by Maya no. Angelou? I need to read more fiction. <laughs> I read nonfiction in children's books <laughs> with my kids. Yeah. So I need to get a fiction little bit. Fiction is good. It is good. Um, yeah. Um, so I think a lot of my ideas just come from personal experience, like the butterfly field is cool. Wondering what happens to people that die. Yeah. So and then yeah. I try to engage my spirituality in that way. So help me understand your process. So an idea comes, do you write it down? Do you... Idea comes, I write it down. Usually I just sort of blast the whole story. It comes really quickly. Wow, wow. And then um, writing is basically editing. So you put all your story there and then you edit it, make it less, make it work. Mm. And then when I feel good about it, is then I start looking for an illustrator. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. And how do you, do you let the illustrator, so I've never worked with an illustrator before, so do you let him or her read through it and come up with their own interpretation or do you guide them and give them some guide rails along the way or how does that work? Uh, I like to give them a lot of leeway, but I also, some of my, st- most of my stories, there's a certain vision to it. So if I feel like their illustration isn't expressing my vision of it, mm. then I'll ask them to change. Okay. Yeah. And, and most of them will, they'll give you one or two um, times. Yeah, well, they're designers, right? So, right, right. right. so they'll, they'll give some... you like a rough sketch, then they'll color cool. it in. Until, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed working with illustrators. Uh, that's very cool. Very mm-hmm. cool. So do you have some children's books that you draw from as far as inspiration or ideas? I mean... Oh, yeah, I think I, think I do a lot better in life if I read my stories more because I do think they're very personal and um, I think they'd help me grow. Mm. Um, there, there's just this one idea that cu- keeps popping in my mind. Um, I wrote this story called uh, A Planet Made of Music. 
and one of the characters always runs with his head looking up. There is no, I don't know of any runner that does that, but that idea just... He's trying to figure out where he's going. <laughs> I mean, it sounds pretty smart to me, right? Yeah, right. or in, in, the, in the story, it's like um, the, other, the other characters are wondering, what's he looking at? And so I think, I think that's really important to know what you're looking at. Cool, yeah. When you run. Yeah, wasn't I think it was Yogi Berra who said, if you don't know where you're going, you may not get there. And I'm paraphrasing, but all right, all right. yeah, that's it's that's a big takeaway, I think. So that's neat. Mm-hmm. What is he looking at, or would that right, spoil? Right. The... What what's inspiring him? Or... Yeah. So are you going to tell us? His soul? No. No. So it's just up to the <laughs> right, reader right, to right. interpret. Um, yeah. I think I think it's just a good reflection. Like, what is moving me at this point? What am I seeing at this? It's point? Good awareness, always. Right, right. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so many of us don't learn that. I mean, I didn't really learn that until, you know. Well, you know, it takes a while. Yeah, yeah, it's like a habit. You got to just keep <laughs> going back to it and refreshing it, what that is, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So is that uh, maybe a next book concept, do you think? Do you have other ideas that are oh, in the oh, works? Oh, so in this time that we're living in, it's very political, it's very... so. Personally, I've become more political because of all the events that are going on. So my next book, um, I'm really excited about it. It's called um, Greedy Corporation Man. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and this is for kids. Is that right? It is. Okay. <laughs> that reminds me of like the Lego movie. I may mean, have never seen that, but there's like, uh, there's a businessman who's like the evil businessman or right, something, right, right. which I didn't appreciate. <laughs> but... <laughs> It is what it is. I'm like, what messages am I sending my kids over here? Because there's good businessmen in the world. Right. But what, okay, so tell me a little bit more. What is it called? Greedy businessman? Greedy corporation man. Greedy corporation man. Well, I think there are a lot of problems in our country today because of the greed. Hmm. Um, and it's causing a lot of suffering. Um, and so that's basically what it is. It's about three children and their um, attempts to enjoy life and Greedy Corporation Man is preventing them from that. Interesting. But in the end, Greedy Corporation Man becomes the good Corporation Man. Yeah. So, oh, you, might, cool. so you might appreciate so it. So there's a transformation, right. there's a change. Yeah, sort of there's... like the Grinch, but... Cool. Yeah, that's I love that. Everyone yeah. loves the Grinch, right. right? Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, that's a good formula, so... That's, yeah, that's a good formula. So, <laughs> man, I'll try that. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, growing up, my dad used to always say, follow the money, right? <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah, so there's always greed. That's always been, you know... Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. So when you write these books, how long, I mean, what, what does it take you start to finish as far as like from inception to completion? You know, you said once every, you know, one book every two years was your first cadence for the first mm-hmm. 20 years. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like you've accelerated that a little bit if you're doing two a year. So like, what does that look like? Because obviously you're not working on this full time, correct? Forty hours a week, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it, Amazon makes it really easy. Um, so it takes me about six months, I would say. Okay. To just from the first start of writing the story to having it illustrated and published on Amazon, self published on Amazon. Cool, cool, very right? cool. And most of that is the illustration part. That's probably two to three months. Hmm. Okay. Working with the illustrator to get it there. Yeah. Awesome. Based on revisions and how well mm-hmm. you guide him or her probably right, right, how right. well they receive your, you know, mm-hmm. info and Right. Yeah, cool. Okay. So I'm curious to know about this vehicle, as I would call it, of children's books. So you're a spiritual person, mm-hmm. you're a very creative person, clearly. Mm-hmm. You could have taken the stage. You could have, you know, there's so many things, right, you uh-huh. could have done, and you're putting that, you know, the vehicle you chose was children's books, which I find so fascinating, and I love that, and I've had mm-hmm. a lot of ideas myself, too, you know, because I tell my kids story. We Our routine is out of control, Al. <laughs> it went from, like, a 20-minute, let's start bedtime and good night, to, like, this 90-minute saga. Reading? Oh, uh, not just reading. I mean, uh-huh. there's reading, and then there's some prayers and then there's a story and then sometimes there's the next story and there's the brushing of the teeth and the getting dressed of the clothes and it's it's a it's 90 minutes now i need to you know mm-hmm. get a hold of it a little bit and get it back down to an hour because it's my whole <laughs> evening but and i enjoy it i'm not complaining uh-huh. but um at, at night we tell i tell stories 
mm-hmm. some really cool creative stories. Yes. And you know, sometimes I tell a really good one. I get in the zone and I love storytelling. You're making it up, you mean? Yeah, just okay. totally. Yeah, and yeah, we, yeah, yeah. And what's neat is like we've, my, my, my children and I have come up with about 12 kind of like foundational stories mm-hmm. of characters over mm-hmm. the years that we've developed. And now we've gotten to the point where we have a bowl and we just pick a name out of the hat and we're like, oh, tonight it's Tali and Chalice or oh, tonight it's uh, uh, Huck and Finn. Uh-huh. Or, oh, tonight it's uh, Fruit Color the Alien. Like, we just have these. And it's interesting because there's always a neat message or a neat learning or a lesson in there. And I've often thought, like, oh, you know, I should yeah, I should put this message into a children's book. Now, I haven't done anything with it like you have, which is why I'm, I'm, I, I'm so um, uh, moved by your work here. But why children's books out of everything else you could have done to express your creation and spirituality and everything? Why do you think you pick children's books? Um, I think really that's just how the works come to me. Hmm. I think it's the best form now. Um, I think I might there might come a time when I'm exhausted of ideas or inspiration that are that I see it come in that format. Hmm. But um, until that time comes, um, that, that's the form it'll be in. I, I definitely like to try making movies. Hmm, cool. Um, like cartoon kids type things? No, just r- regular movies. Wow. Like Guardians of the Galaxy type movies. Oh, cool. Guardians of the Galaxy is very spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. Well, that's neat. So I could be sitting here with like the future director of the next Marvel uh, film. Could be, but... <laughs> Probably not. Keep your head up. Keep looking forward, Al. Come on, you know? You do have to reread some of your own. Oh, you haven't published that yet. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on the show. This was so much fun to sure. be here with you. I'm that's thankful great. for inv- you investing your time. Mm-hmm. Um, let me ask you this. Where can we find you? Where, where would you like the viewers and listeners, you know, where, where can we find your work? I actually have a website. It's called No End Books. Okay. Oh, I noticed at, that was really neat. Right. I was paying attention. Oh. <laughs> and at the end of the book, instead of, the is end. that a spoiler or can we talk about that? Oh, definitely. All my so, books had that ending. Yeah, no end. Right. So, you know, cool. all children's stories have the end, the end. Well, you know, spirituality, there is no end to yeah. you. There is no end to me. Cool. So I, I love it. I end my stories with no end. No so, end. So I love noendbooks.com, that. that's where you can find my stories. Actually, I've, I've placed the full length of my stories in that website. I mean, you can purchase the hard copy, you can purchase the oh, ebook. Oh, that's cool. Wow. But I really wow. believe that it's exposure is... That's so awesome. I don't really care if I make money of it. I, out of it. I want the most, num- the greatest number of people to see my story. You just want to share your right. creativity. That's right. so, so neat. Cool. So do you have a publisher or you're self-published, but do you have a, is it like no end publishing or anything? Have you done oh, anything I, with that? or? I, I say it's rock... I actually created Rock Publishing. Okay. So I'm president of Rock Publishing. So cool. That's what I use for. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So what was the website again? Noendbooks.com. Cool. Noendbooks.com. Thank you. That's awesome. Oh. Okay. One more question for you. Okay. If you could bestow some wisdom on our listeners and viewers today, mm-hmm. what would be like the one thing you'd want to share with them? The one message you'd want to share with them? What can they walk away with? Um, there's a good quote I like. Um, the closest manifestation to God in this existence is um, space and silence. Mm-hmm. So um, I wrote a children's story called Bunny Hears, The Bunny Hears Silence. So um, I think that would contribute a lot if people try to hear the silence in their lives. Cool. Do you meditate? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you read any Eckhart Tolle? Yes. Tolle? 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 Yes. Um, yeah. I have his um, audio books. Okay. Like. Yeah, because yeah, he talks a lot in his books right. about silence and the expansive and yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Very mm-hmm. cool. So what was it again? What was your message again? Was it oh, pay more attention right. to... Try, try to hear, try to listen to the silence love in, it. Your, in your life. I love that. Yeah. And, and a lot of people talk about music and, you know, without the silence, right. there wouldn't be the music. Right. And the space, it's like, you know, what's this room made of? Right. Space. Oh, primarily. We, we both know that quote. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So these objects wouldn't be if it weren't for the space surrounding right. them. I love that. We're like um, 0.9999999 space. It, we are. Right. We yeah. are. 
It's amazing. And look at the vast universe, right? Oh, that's so Lost cool. Space. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Well, thanks so much, Al, for being on the oh, show Oh, thank today. you, Sean. I enjoyed it. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Sean here again. Thanks so much for joining us this week. Say, if you like what you saw today, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so that you can catch future episodes. Take care and make it a great day.